Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mrs. Sibetlamene Kharori, the King Pet Principal. If you haven't subscribed already onto my channel, may you please pause the video and click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so that every time when I upload a video, you get um, notified. In this video, I want us to talk about the principle of chemiluminescence. So the easier way to be able to remember what happens here is to dissect the word. So this word, you have chemi and then this luminescence. So chemi in this case, it will stand for a like chemical and then luminescence, which will be light emission. So it means during the principle of um, chemical emission, there is um, emission of light during the course of a chemical reaction. So that is why it's chemiluminescence. So what is the principle of chemiluminescence? So like I said, that is the emission of light during the course of a chemical reaction. So it means the chemically excited electrons, they produce photons when they move from their excited state into the electronic ground state. So let me write it down. So we say, So we have electrons that will be chemically excited So they, when they move from their higher excited state to an electronic ground state. So that's when these photons, so photon, it's talking about light. So that's when it will be released. And then in a chemical pathology or in, uh, in chemistry, when we measure um, the amount of an analyte in a sample, then we would say to add on top of this is that um, the, con the concentration of the analyte is directly proportional to the amount of light emitted emitted in a sandwich assay And it is inversely proportional in a competitive assay. Okay, so to recap, what is the principle of chemiluminescence? So basically in chemiluminescence, there is the emission of light during the course of a chemical reaction whereby chemically excited electrons, they release photons when they move from their higher um, energy state into the electronic ground state. And the concentration of the analyte in the sample, it is directly proportional to the light that is emitted in a sandwich assay. And it is inversely proportional in a competitive assay. So let me try to explain to you what does this electronic ground state and higher acid excited electrons. So what would happen in a, uh, in a substrate? So a substrate is made up of atoms. 
So an atom looks like this, let me black. So your atom will have a nucleus, and then on the nucleus you get, let me make it bigger. On the nucleus, what you will get, you will get neutrons, which are neutral, and you also get protons, which are positively charged. And then uh, what you will have after the nucleus, so now you'll start having orbitals. So these are orbitals inside of the substrate. And then on the, um, the orbitals, you will have your electrons now, which are negatively charged. So what happens is that when that substrate that is there um, in, the, in the machine during this process, so the substrate will be catalyzed by an enzyme. And then once the substrate is catalyzed by an enzyme, the electrons, they get excited. So that is why we say they are chemically excited. So the electrons, they will get excited. And as they get excited, they will move into the higher energy level. So it means this electron can move up there because it's excited. But then now, because here it is not stable, it is not where they are supposed to be. So at the end of the day, at some point, they will have to come down. So as they come down to their original electronic ground state, so that's when they release those photons. Usually when I explain this, I like to use um, an example of somebody who smokes weed. So when you smoke weed, you get high at that moment. But at some point now, that highness starts to go down as time goes on because you can't remain high forever unless if you will keep on smoking over and over again. So it's the same things with the electrons. When they get excited, they will go up into the higher energy level. But because it's not stable, they will have to come down into their electronic ground state. So as they come down to the electronic ground state, this is when these photons are released. So the light will be released. So that's what we mean when we say they will move from a higher to a. So this is this um, explains the 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 um, the atom of the substrate. So now I'm going to explain to you how does um, this usually happen. What what usually happen in that instrument as soon as there is a patient sample. So stay with me. So in explaining this, I would want to also cover the sandwich assay as well as the competitive assay so that you can see from what I, I said in the de uh, definition that when the, um, the concentration of the, of the analyte will be directly proportional to a, in a sandwich assay to concentrate to um, the light emitted and then the light emitted will be inversely proportional in a competitive assay. So let's start with a sandwich assay. So in a sandwich, as you know, sandwich, if you can think about the sandwich, you will have your bread, your poloni, and your uh, another slice of bread. So that's what makes a sandwich. So what happens in a sandwich, I say, is that in a, it can be in a cuvette, there in the instrument. And then that cuvette might um, have a bound depending on what you are looking for in the patient sample, because certain tests can look for an antibody and some tests can look for an antigen. So it will depend uh, on that specific assay that does look for an antigen or an antibody. So by the way, chemiluminescence, it is an immunoassay. So that's why we will talk about antigen and antibody reactions. So you will have your, uh, let's say now we are looking for beta HCG which is a test for pregnancy. So it means we will have on the solid phase, you will have an antibody bound to the cuvette. This antibody, um, it is an antibody that is specific to beta HCG antigen. So this is what you will have in your cuvette. And what's going to happen is that as soon as a patient sample it is added there. So let's say our patient is pregnant. So it means the patient will have the beta-HCG antigen in their blood or in their serum. 
So once that serum is added, so the antigen, which is beta ACG, will bound. Because remember, we said this antibody it is specific to beta ACG. So it means it's an anti beta ACG. So it will bound to that um, antibody because they are specific to one another, like a lock and a key. Then after that, it has been done, then another um, antibody will be added. So that antibody now, it will be an antibody that is tagged with an enzyme, but not any other enzyme, but an enzyme that has the ability to produce light. So there is our enzyme. It, it can be ALP, the alkaline phosphatase, or we can say it is the horse radish peroxidase enzyme. So now, all of these now, what do they do? They form an antigen and antibody uh, reaction. Yeah? So this is a sandwich. Like we say, we are dealing with a sandwich. I say, can you see we have an antibody, our antigen, and an antibody with an enzyme, and then both they form a, a sandwich. So now there comes that substrate. So that substrate can either be um, acridium, ester, or any luminol that can be used in this case, which is a chemical. So now a substrate will be added. A substrate will be added. Then as soon as this substrate is added, the enzyme will catalyze the substrate. So it means this enzyme is also specific to that luminal because both of them, remember I said, will use an enzyme that has an ability to produce light when it reacts. So this enzyme will catalyze the substrate. So this is that substrate that will have those atoms that we we're talking about. So the electrons in the substrate, they are going to be excited. And then once they are excited, there will be some light emission. And then now the luminometer will um, detect the amount of light that will be produced. Then that is why we say the concentration then of beta HCG, it is directly proportional to the light emitted. So as you can see from this um, example already, if you have a lot of beta HCG, so it means more of um light will be released because this light won't so let's say now you don't have beta scg so then this patient is not pregnant so let's say the patient is negative is not pregnant so what's going to happen you will still have that anti beta scg that will be there then when the serum sample is added then there won't be any antigen that is going to bind to this antibody. And then when that um, antibody that is tagged with um, an enzyme, it won't have anything as well to bind to it. So, that, so that's why then during the washing phase, this is going to be washed off. Because it's not bound to anything that keeps it to the solid phase. So it's going to wash off. And then as soon as the substrate is added, there won't be any enzyme that is going to catalyze it. So that's why there won't be any light that will be produced. So basically, that is the sandwich assay. So that is why I say the higher the concentration of the analyte, it means the more the light will be transmitted or not transmitted, emitted. Yes. So now let's go to competitive assay. So let's say you have your antigens on still on the that will be there on the solid phase. So what happens with the competitive assay is you can hear the word compare. So it means there's a competition in this case. So it means now your patient sample, which will be containing the antibody, because this one I say it's an antigen. So now it means from the patient sample, we are looking for the antibody. So the patient sample that will be having the antibody in question will be added. So this antibody is specific to the antigen that is there. Yeah? 
And then as well, at the same time, the reagent is going to be added. But what do we have in that reagent? So in the reagent, there is an antibody, but that antibody now, it's also specific to this antigen. The only different thing with that antibody is that it is tagged with an enzyme as well. So it can be um, host, uh, host reddish peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase. It depends on whatever um, the, the suppliers are using there. So now it means your antibody from the patient sample and the antibody from the reagents, they are going to compete for binding sites on the antigens. So let's see now. If now your patient is negative, for example, or your patient yeah, does not have that much of those um, antibodies. Let's say we are looking for HIV antibodies, so this patient does not have HIV. So with the reagent, remember, the, the instrument has been programmed on how much it might put. So if it puts in 50 microliters of that reagent, it will put in 50 microliters throughout all the samples because that's how it is programmed. And already you know that how, how in that 50 microliters, there's only a certain number of um, antibodies that will be present there. So now we're going to start with a negative scenario. So this... There, it is our antibodies. So, the patient is added, which does not have the antibodies, and the reagent is added, which has the antibodies. What, what's going to happen? It means the reagent is going to bind. Né? And then as the reagent binds, upon addition of the substrate, because the antibodies that are from the reagent, they contain an enzyme, then it means the substrate is going to be catalyzed and then there will be light that will be formed so that's why i meant that the concentration is inversely proportional so here the concentration it is inversely proportional to the light emitted in the reagent there's only a programmed number that will always be there but in the patient there's no programmed number so let's say now this patient is very pregnant now or this patient is very positive which hiv they have a lot of antibodies so now there we have antibodies from the patient and antibodies from the reagent then these two now they are going to compete for binding sites so the patient now because the patient has more because we don't have control of the numbers that are there in the patient sample because they are unknown but with the reagent we can control because this is what was produced in a laboratory so now these two as they find for binding sites What's going to be happen, uh, like I would usually say, that there will be a survival of the fetus in this case. So in this case, you have more antibodies from the patient. So it means now the antibodies from the patient are the ones that are going to bind more. So let's say there, the antibodies bind to the antigen. And then let's say there, the antibodies from the reagent, there they are. So can you see that still uh, when the substrate is added né, and some light will be um, emitted but it won't be that much light because the, the antibodies from the patient they do not contain the enzyme. So it means they will not catalyze the substrate. So that is why it means the higher the concentration of the other light inside the patient sample, the lesser the light that will be emitted. So basically that's how it is. So they compete. As you can see, it's competition. Both of them are the same. But now they're going to compete. The difference is that this one will be having an enzyme. So that's why we say this side is inversely proportional. And then in a sandwich, I say it is directly proportional. So basically, in a nutshell, that's what chemical luminescence is. And that's what the sandwich, sandwich assay and a competitive assay is. And then that's what usually happens in, 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 in an instrument that uses the principle of chemi luminescence that's it from me if you have any questions or if there's something that i didn't explain appropriately that you don't understand may you please write down there in the comment field but if there's anything else as well you can comment i would like to um interact with you and then if you want assistant like in-depth assistant with your body exam preparation may you please send me an email down there from me to you up until next time bye